Well, hello and welcome back to Producer Dan. I'm Dan. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. So today is video number four in a series of videos that I'm doing called September Blue Redo. I'm redoing a song, a beautiful song called September Blue that I recorded in my home studio about 10 years ago, and I thought it deserved a redo. So in just a quickly review, in video number one, I recorded all my acoustic guitar tracks. I did five uh, acoustic guitar tracks, doubling some, used a couple of different microphones for the different uh, picking and strumming types. In video number two, I started the drums. I started setting up Easy Drummer and started picking the drum uh, kits that I wanted to use and uh, showed you how to edit the drums in the uh, Easy Drummer window and also in Pro Tools. In video number three, uh, which was the last video, I reviewed the different drum kits that I chose for the song. I went a little further with the uh, Easy Drummer and made some changes, chose a different kit for the end. Uh, so you'll want to watch these videos to see what I've done so far. Uh, also in that video, I recorded the bass track, both MIDI and a real bass, and my lead guitar and my rhythm guitar. I have since re-recorded the lead guitar it was slightly out of tune, I thought, so I put down a better lead guitar, kind of off camera, and I recorded two more uh, 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 rhythm guitars, electric guitars, right and left. So I got a big wall of guitars at the end, uh, so it's sounding nice. I'm really, really happy with it. And in this video, I'll quickly review everything that I, that I re-recorded, and I'll show you what it sounds like now. And then we will get started on uh, recording the strings and orchestra section for the end, and also uh, a choir vocal type uh, for the end of the song, and then a lead vocal will be recorded at the end as well. Um, I want to clear something up that I said in my last video that I was going to bounce everything down to a st uh, stereo track to make it easier to work with. And in no way did I mean I'm going to use that as my final mix. That's only because my RAM isn't very large and I plan to use a lot of uh, MIDI instruments when I do my uh, orchestra and string section and also plan to put down a lot of uh, vocal tracks as well. So uh, I needed to kind of just consolidate that music track down to a stereo track just to give my computer a little a little break so it doesn't quit in the middle that's that's what I've done so I just wanted to clear that up so I'm excited to get started let's go into Pro Tools now and I'll show you what I did this week okay so what I thought I'd do now is just kind of review uh, some of the little things that I did for instance the lead guitars that uh, I did over again I actually did them doubled one right one left And you can go even further with that, but you can see right here, I've just kind of done nine o'clock and three o'clock. So uh, not only did I re-record my lead guitar, but I put down a couple of more rhythm guitars here for the very end. This was the original rhythm guitar that I put in. It's a bit severe and it's very distorted, but I'm keeping it and putting it right down the center and putting it in as needed in the end of the song, but here's what it sounds like. Here are the other two that I've added, because I, I wanted a more defined chord note, if notes, if that makes sense. And I have this one on the right side. This is the sound that I really wanted, that, that I thought was missing. Uh, it's a strong rhythm guitar sound, but it's, it's very clear in what, what chords uh, are being hit. It's not quite so distorted. Here's all three all together. So I'm going to be very happy with that. 
and uh, I'm glad I, I went back and did some more guitar so I have some things to work with in the final mix. And this is what I have so far. This is what we're going to be working with today. Okay, so I haven't really mixed that. That is just a static mix of that, but I am very happy with that, and I know I'm going to be able to sing something nice to it and put some strings on it. I know it's very 80s ballad at the end. It kind of starts out kind of Fleetwood Mackey and Jim Croce in the beginning with all the guitars and the mellow drums, uh, and then, yeah, it turns into an 80s ballad at the end. <laughs> which I am happy with. I'm a child from the 80s, not a child from the 80s, but the 80s was my, uh, was my time. So uh, that's where I am right now, and I'm excited to get going on the strings and the vocals, and I think what I'll do now is uh, get working on the, uh, on the strings, because I have a very good idea what I want to do, and I don't have to set up any of the <laughs> any of the lighting and stuff for that. We can uh, start with that right now. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in a new Pro Tools session. I have bounced the music down to this stereo track, and as you can see, I've opened up uh, many more uh, instrument tracks for the Expand, uh, which is uh, a virtual instrument that comes in Pro Tools. And this is where you can find strings and brass and synth sounds and all of that, and bass sounds. And the way I do my strings is I set something down kind of temporarily, and then I work with that. I work with the mini notes after that, with the intensity, with the notes, with the arrangement. And once I get a MIDI window down, uh, I really love to go in and arrange and, and do all that after. So what I'll do now is put down something rough, something that I think sounds good, uh, something that's close to what I'm imagining. And back to our tracks here, I have many. Um, I started out with 10, I think I made like 15. I auditioned different string sounds like the staccata strings and the legato strings and uh, each setting has a different treatment of the string. It's played a little differently, whether it's nice and, nice and short or nice and long, or if it has a tremolo in it or something. So I have an assortment of things there, starting with this one. So this is nice and, uh, nice and short, and I know where I'm going to use this, so we'll start with that first. We'll see how we use these. Here's some trumpets. I don't know if I'll use those or not. Um, and I have a tuba. <laughs> I like to use this really low. I like to come in with something like that and something like the French horn as well. I love a French horn. French horns, I love it when they come in kind of soft, kind of um, like a swell. Not too active, just kind of giving a note of sorrow or joy or something like that. Um, you can really use the French horn to do that with, and I, I, I really like doing that. I think I can start with this uh, staccato string, and I'm, I'm figuring using this just in the lead solo.
Okay, uh, that one's done. We're moving on. We can. Go, I'm going to go back and judge that later uh, or adjust it. Let's figure out what we're going to do here with this legato tremolo. We'll start with that. How about something like that for this next one? And then we can pan this one right and do something similar. Uh, with something similar on the left. And I'm not an expert on the keys, <laughs> um, but um, again, I try and get more of um, uh, kind of a melody kind of happening, a back melody, something that I know is going to um, complement what I know the vocals are going to do. And what I love about MIDI is it's so adjustable. Uh, it's really like molding, sculpting. Uh, music, it's um, it's something you could spend a lot of time on, uh, and it's nice when you do. So um, just for an example, I'm going to pan this one, the one we just did, to the left. And let's see, I'll find one more like this bright legato. I'll move this over here. So I'll move that one to the right, and I'll do something very similar to what I just did with the one on the left. So I'll initiate the track. And obviously, uh, intensity is going to play a lot into this as well. We'll adjust not only the notes, not only the arrangement, not only the swelling, and all of that, but also the intensity as well. So a lot of thought will go into all of this uh, in the end. I've got to put this in there somewhere. Oops. Maybe not with that. That's awfully loud, too. I know what I'll do. I'll do two of these low legato, and one of them will be low, but I'll do one of them high. Duplicate this. And we will just call this legato high or high legato uh, it's the 3rd of July so that was fireworks by the way <laughs> my neighbors are it's 7 p.m. and they started a little early All right, so we have to repeat that a couple times at the end in the very last uh, outro. And so I'll do one of these right, and we'll find another one to do left. So it is a different day, and it's actually the 4th of July, so if you do hear explosions today, I'm filming uh, uh, on a holiday, and I just did kind of a little rehearsal with the trumpets just to see if it's something that I wanted, um, and I'm not sure, but I'm going to put something down, and it may make it into the final mix or not. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, that I can mold into something. Um, maybe it's something that I'll do. I'll do now. I'll show you how I kind of fix what I've put down here. And here it is. Fix this a little bit. Copy a couple of these, put them here, paste them in. Let's see what that. Is. And of course, I'll turn this down. It's a bit loud, but it's so I can hear. What about this note here? Do I want to keep that or have it come down? Da -na 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 -na. This will be kind of soft in the background, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Bump and have it hit one more time. Bump, bump. Easy way to do that, copy these two, put that here, paste them in, then I can move them. Hold it out. See how easy and fun this is? I could do this all day long. This is a huge part of what uh, w w what I do, and uh, really, since I'm not really, you know, nimble on the keys, uh, and I think a lot of people who actually even are nimble on the keys would still come in and manipulate and create the string section that they actually wanted. So, so now we're going to move on to the uh, to the vocals, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so uh, I'm in the middle of doing my vocal recordings now, but uh, earlier today I did finish all the orchestration. I haven't mixed it yet, but I've got a nice um, kind of isolated uh, rough static mix of everything that I've put together, and I'd like to show you that now. Uh, separate from everything else, these are just the the MIDI orchestra pieces that I put together, and I think it sounds quite nice. So I'll just play you the orchestra now. So I think that came together quite nicely, and uh, it sounds amazing with all the other music as well. And I've put down some vocals, but I wanted to isolate it and show you, uh, you know, what I did with the orchestra. So um, kind of separate from everything else. So a lot of work went into that, and uh, it sounds killer with the electric guitars and the drums and uh, the choir sound that I'm working on now. So. Uh, next, we'll get into the vocals. All right, so I have completed maybe three or four different takes of the main vocal part, and I've finished the background vocal, and I've got like 12 different 
parts for the choir at the end. So I think I'd like to play it for you now. Keep in mind, I haven't mixed anything. I haven't EQ'd any of the orchestra or anything like that. It's all just very rough mix, and no vocal tuning has been done at this point. Uh, but the spirit and the energy of the song is there, and I really do believe uh, the song will surpass my expectations for what I had in mind. <laughs> I'm very happy with it, and I think you'll agree when I play you this last end to the song. So I'll play you to the end of the video, and I want to thank you very much for watching up to this point. And uh, if you do like the content, please like my video, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And um, uh, so I will play you out to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.